First, let's drag and drop these abstract models from Substance Theory Asset. I'm only using the spherical shape in the in this scene. I wanted to use the blue from the wing of the drone, so I use a sampler tool to pick that color. So the final touch is to scatter them around the scene. After this um, comes the water splash, which is a model from Soft and Cydia sets as well. Just placed it under the hook so it looks like a water is splashing. I select the water material for it from the starter set. I use the viewport camera very often when I have to look uh, look at details a bit closer. This way I can keep my render view and uh, just move around with the viewport camera freely. When I work with some Adobe stock models, I just drag and drop them into the scene and scale and place them. I wanted to change the color of the tree so to some pinkish, pinkish color. To be able to do that, I open the material panel and just uh, select a, a color for the model. Or you can just open the base color texture and send it to Photoshop uh, with the pencil icon. In Photoshop, there are multiple ways of doing this. It depends on your taste, but I use use hue, saturation, or color overlays for this. So when you save in Photoshop, it will update in Stager. I use the same uh, color changing method on the astronaut. After importing and scaling the model that I downloaded from Adobe Stock, I changed the base color and images on different parts of the model to change the overall look. After the astronaut turned pink, uh, I put them to their final piece using the viewport camera. There is one more thing I quickly want to show you, and that is how you can create small 3D elements using Adobe Illustrator. I use the latest version of Adobe Illustrator for logo extrusions and simple 3D modeling because it's very easy and fast. For this project, I created a few cables for the flying island. Usually I open a new document and I use the pen tool to draw the, the shape of the cables. With the anchor point, we can change the curve of the line, change the stroke so the cable will look a bit thicker. Locate and open the 3D Materials tab. Open it from the window menu if you don't have it open. I like to use Inflate for the extrusion. Uh, I also like to change the col uh, stroke color to gray so I can see the, the surface better. You can see how what happened with the, with the stroke. It has a certain depth. After a few final touches on the stroke, we can export the model. Go to File, Export Selection and uh, the Export window will open. Select the folder where you would like to save your object file. Don't forget to select the OBJ format and give it a prefix, prefix if you like. Click export a set and we are ready. Let's make a few more. So let's see what happens when we import this to Stager. We can skip the generate UVs command as um, we are only going to use a plain color on them. I like to use the move to ground function to bring the models uh, up above the ground plane. After importing them to Stager, we can create a composition that we like. We can use the Align tool to organize them better. Simply use the gizmo to move, scale and rotate them. We can change the base color to see how they look. 
just apply a base material onto them and change the base color. To export them in this uh, current composition, select them all, go to File, and then Export Selected. In the pop-up window, select the OBJ format, select the Export folder, and press, press Export. When we import this uh, object file back into Stager, you can see that everything is in a one folder. For me, it's easier to work with them later on. So the final task is to place these cables under the rocks. I use the viewport camera in close-up a lot. With the render preview on, so I can find the best uh, placement for these assets. Now that our composition is ready, it's time for rendering. We can select from multiple presets when it comes to render quality. Usually I'm happy with the high setting, but uh, it depends on the project, uh, what you and what you're rendering. Usually I don't change the render settings here except the quality. On the right, you can find the export settings, select uh, the camera resolution, export format and uh, the right folder and click render. With my video card, which is an NVIDIA 3090, it took 3 minutes and 15 seconds to render this uh, HD scene. When you click on these three dots, you can open the PSD file in Photoshop for further editing. I use this a lot. Stage renders come with a bunch of extra layers that you can use for different purposes and um, are super useful for masking. I like to use the sky replacement in Photoshop, so I converted the background color to a rasterized layer. In the edit menu, you can find the sky replacement tool. You can select from multiple presets to create nice clouds. I like to create fog from these clouds uh, that I use as an overlay on my images. I duplicate the sky layer, desaturate it and place it on top of all the layers and switch it to screen mode. You can use gradient masks to soften the effect. Repeat this a few times if you want to create more depth. As a last step, I blur the clouds a little so they match the lens blur of the image. As a final touch, we can try to play around with color lookups. I really love to use this because they give a totally different look and feel to an artwork. I have an insane amount of color lookups and my favorites are the ones from Grayscale Gorilla. And now the artwork is ready. I know this process was quite long, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you could learn something new. Thank you for watching.